Welcome to New Hampshire's Business, I'm Fred Coker. There's a new survey out uh, on broadband in New Hampshire. Broadband, that's internet speed. And let's look at a pie chart that gives you a, a general idea of some of the overall findings, and that is the blue. 56% internet speed sufficient and reliable. This is among uh, businesses, several hundred of them in New Hampshire who were surveyed. And then the orange, internet speed insufficient but reliable. And then the red uh, piece of the pie chart, internet speed insufficient and unreliable. We're gonna get into this in a minute with my guest. But let's hear some of the key findings of the survey. Most have inter speed, internet connection via cable modem. Four in 10 say internet speed insufficient. Nearly all say internet access reliable. Now this, three-fourths say some employees use it to work from home. Nearly half say faster, more reliable access would make employees more likely to work from home. And then this, 91% use the internet to communicate with staff and customers, 74% for marketing, advertising, and social media, 70% for download of large files, and 49% for cloud-based services. With me to talk about all of this are two people who have been part of this. Um, Liz Gray, Director of Entrepreneurship for Live Free and Start, which is an entrepreneurial group in New Hampshire. Welcome, nice to have you Thank here. Thank you very much for having me. And Taral Kowison, who is chair of the New Hampshire High Technology Council and also of the Internet Society. Welcome, Taral. Thank you so much, Nice Fred. to have you here. Um, Liz. Why was this study done? Sure, so for years we had heard a lot of anecdotal stories from companies across the state that said that they had challenges accessing broadband and making sure that it was a reliable um, mm -hmm. service. And you know, because we had a lack of hard data, we wanted to try to quantify it in some way. Mm -hmm. So Live Free and Start worked with our partners over at the Division of Economic Development as well as uh, partners at the New Hampshire Broadband Planning and Mapping Program at the University yeah. of New Hampshire, and we created the survey. We are proud that we we worked with industry and academic um, members, um, and we, we put together the survey. We worked really hard on it, but our goal was simple and you got very straightforward. Responses too. We did. Uh, 579 businesses ended up responding yeah. to it, and what we really wanted was just to get a better understanding of the needs and challenges of businesses. And those who have been following this know that the North Country and the Bananoc region, in New Hampshire, in particular, have mm -hmm. the connectivity problems and broadband problems that uh, need to be fixed. And so we'll uh, talk about that. Um, Terrell, why do we have still areas of the state like the North Country and Medanic region without the adequate broadband? Yeah, so it's a global problem, frankly, and I'm not surprised to see some of the stats here in New Hampshire that mirror what's going on. Right. Um, you know, part of it is just related to the regions and the distance from where the providers are actually providing service. Mm. And the opportunity is really around the ecosystem working together to get those last unconnected yeah. connected. Yeah, and uh, the, the funding, which is always, uh, the funding is always and of course sure. return on investment by right. those companies that are going to be the providers. That's Absolutely. always a problem, right? Absolutely. Yeah, what's going to be done with these findings? You know, ultimately we really want to get people engaged in the conversation and we're hoping that they're going to be talking about the current and the future needs of businesses as it pertains to broadband and Economic access. Development. Exactly, economic development. We want the survey results to be a part of future economic development planning efforts, and we hope that uh, policymakers and legislators look at this and really think about how they can make changes to either enhance or remove barriers to accessibility, adoption, and affordability of broadband across the state. Yeah, I thought one of the things that in your uh, survey, the schools in New Hampshire, uh, 37 school districts still need fiber connections. Uh, 72 uh, school districts in New Hampshire need better Wi-Fi, so we do have some issues that need to be addressed. Uh, but there has been a lot of investment to date uh, by the uh, companies that uh, provide uh, broadband in this state, and we all know that. Mm -hmm. We just have a ways to go. Now, I know that Senator Hassan uh, is leading, uh, helping to lead 30 senators in the U.S. Senate, as you know, mm -hmm. to get more uh, funding for rural broadband, so uh, we're going to keep track of that. Liz Gray, Director of Entrepreneurship at Live Free and Start, and Terrell Kowison, Chair of the New Hampshire High Tech Council and of the Internet Society. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Thank you. If you want to look at some of those findings again, go to WMUR.com. I can say it, WMUR.com. Go up the menu on the left-hand corner and click on that, and then click on Local News, and then scroll down to New Hampshire's Business.